If you're nervous, right, if you're deep down inside, you may be trying to hide it, but deep down you're nervous, they can feel it. Even if you're trying to hide it, even if you're doing a good job of hiding it, they can still tell. So you have to get to a place where you are genuinely comfortable with in these very uncomfortable situations. And so for, for me, for me, it comes back to... The business that everybody wants to get to is the business in which you're not out looking for the clients, but the client is looking for you. But obviously that is built, that doesn't, you know, miraculously appear. You have to do things consistently in order for you to achieve that. Because again, in the concept of today business and tomorrow business, in order for an agent to get to that point, it has to be a combination of consistent follow-up, presence in their, you know, online spaces what else would you say like would you narrow it down to that yeah yeah that's what you want an attraction business you know where everybody your clients are calling you i mean that's what everybody that's everybody's dream dream business right i tell you what it is the sales business and the personal branding business looks exactly the same for the first three to five years you're out there on the outside it looks the same you're hustling you're bustling you're trying to talk to people see what you can do to to put a deal together and help people right here's the difference though the personal brander is accumulating clients whether they want to do anything or not and they have a system in place to build that brand after the fact whereas when you make that great first impression there's a machine in place that allows them never to forget who you are the sales agent doesn't do that they're throwing away people who aren't motivated right now and they're not staying in touch with clients after the deal that's the difference one is accumulating humans humans in the market and the other one is just looking for sales today with disregard to anything for the future disregard of anything you know as far as people not being motivated and who's going to win right so the sales guy maybe he does more sales in the first year or two but i'll tell you this the snowball is building for the personal branding agent right the snowball is building and then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be ricky caruth you're gonna be doing 100 deals a year without making a single phone call, no social media, no nothing except for a weekly email. That's the machine that I built my personal brand on for real estate. So to answer your question, you know, you mentioned follow-up. Guys, listen, it, the fortune's in the follow-up, right? Maybe, okay, <laughs> maybe. Here's the thing, what I've learned about follow-up here in the more recent years, people are putting way too much weight on follow-up. They're putting way too much time on follow-up, okay? Here's why. What I've realized is that people that are gonna do deals, sure, you can follow up and do, get some deals that you wouldn't have had when you followed up. True. But just think about this for just a second and try to understand, well, maybe yeah, I need to follow up, but maybe I'm spending a little too much time there, too much effort or too much, I'm spending too much energy thinking about follow up because here's what I've learned. People that are gonna do deals or do business with you, they're gonna do business with you regardless if you follow up or not right? Most of them, most of them, not all of them, most of them. And then the ones who aren't going to do business with you, they don't, there's no need in following up with them, right? I really think follow up is, is mandatory. We all need to do it, but I think the world we're living in is putting us in a position where we th we're putting way too much weight on it and not enough weight on, we got to go find more clients. Think about if you eliminated some of this follow-up that you're doing with people, right? Really think about their situations. Cause I'm a big, I'm a huge component of finding out why people want to do stuff. I got to hear the backstory. I don't care what's going on, where I got the lead or what they're doing. I need to know why. Right? When I can get deeper into why they're doing what they're trying to do, that's when magic happens, guys. If you can start focusing every client conversation around why they're doing what they're trying to do, I think you're gonna find far, 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 far more success with developing the relationship, getting the deal done, helping them, feeling more gratified at the end. You feel closer to your clients too, you know? And you're, and you're like almost emotionally invested at that point. And they love you for that, you know? Cause you're a good person. And they see that, you know, finding out why people want to do stuff, I think is the, one of the biggest keys to the whole puzzle of sales. You know, I think a lot of people are skipping. I, I'll say something about that, Ricky, based on also something you said, which is that success depends on one thing, which is making people feel comfortable with you. So yeah. if you understand why they're doing what they're doing, then 
just, you know, oh, what a coincidence. It just makes them feel more comfortable with you. But let me ask you this. How does the agent feel comfortable with the client? So we're trying to get the client feel comfortable with us. But how does the agent feel comfortable with the client? Well, and that's the key to making them feel comfortable with you right is being comfortable with them right people feed off other people's energy okay that's the key to this whole thing people feed off other people's energy so if you're nervous right if you're deep down inside you may be trying to hide it but deep down you're nervous they can feel it you can't hide it it's your tone is a little off your body language is a little off your eyes your every your breath your everything you're, even if you're trying to hide it even if you're doing a good job of hiding it they can still tell right and so you have to get to a place where you are genuinely comfortable with in these very uncomfortable situations and so for, for me for me it comes back to intentions right yeah. when you when you fall back on your intentions that you really are there to help people there's no ulterior motive there's no expectations there's you're not in it for you you're really in it for them and you fall all the way back on that hundred percent then you can be confident because at that point you don't care what other people think if someone says oh you're just trying to list my house you're like okay well <laughs> I hate you feel that way but that's not what I'm trying to do here ma'am right I don't want to sell my house good <laughs> that's not why I'm calling you you know, I'm calling to see what I can do to help you, ma'am. You know, when you go all the way to the point where you are generally trying to use your business to just help people. Guys, listen, when you when you use your, your business as a vehicle, okay, to help people, think of your business as a service, which it is, it's a service. We're too far into the gotta get appointments, gotta get listings, gotta make sales, gotta do this, gotta do that mentality. And we're not thinking about our business in terms of it actually being a service to help people. Like think of your business as like, almost like a volunteer, you're like you're a volunteer for a community service job. Think of it like that. You are the highest paid volunteer workers in the world, okay? That's, that's what you need to think of yourself as. You need to go into every situation expecting zero, literally open your ears and listen to why they're doing what they're trying to do and then help them do it. Listen, closings are happening every day by the truck loads. Why aren't you guys closing those deals, right? You're not talking to enough people listening to what, why they're trying to do what they're trying to do. The closings that are happening every day are happening with real estate agents. Sure, there's a little percentage over here that are for sale by owners and off-market deals and all this and that, but look in your MLS and look at the truckloads of deals that people, they want to use an agent. They have to use an agent. They don't know how to do the deal. It's too complicated. There's too many you know, variables. There's, it's too treacherous. There's you know, the market is a wild place. I mean, I couldn't come to you guys' market as great as I am here locally. I couldn't come to you guys' market at all. It would be like looking, it would be like trying to read Chinese, trying to figure out what something's worth or reading the contract. It's, I know I've been doing this 20 years and I couldn't come to your market and I wouldn't feel comfortable unless I was using one of you guys as a real estate agent. That's how bad it is. You can imagine how bad it is for an actual, just every ordinary day consumer. You know, it's tough. They need us, okay? So you gotta start thinking about the fact that people need agents and that you're offering a service and you need to walk in every situation with no expectations. Listen, I'm here, this is me. This is what I do and I'm here to help you. You know, what can I do to help you? Right? And if not now, is there an agent you would work with? You know, I'd love to stay in touch with you. What's your email? It's like you're pleading, you're, you're, you're pouring your heart out, you know, because you genuinely care. And that's when you can start to feel comfortable.